The next talk is Active Stereo Net End to End Self Supervised Learning for Active Stereo Systems by Yin Da Shang, Jean Fanello, Sami Kamis, Christoph Rehmann, Julian Valentin, Adash Kordel, Vladimir Tankovic, who many offers here, Sharm Aizadi, and Thomas Funkhauser. And uh, Yin Da Shang is presenting. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yin Da Zhang uh, from Princeton Vision and Robotics Group. And this is joint work with people from uh, Google Daydream and my advisor, uh, Professor Tan Van Kouser. Uh Today, I'm going to talk about Active Stereo. So these days, step sensor has become widely available and are making uh, many future applications from happening. And most of the commercial depth sensor uh, are built with active sensing technologies, such as time of flight or structure light, uh, which send uh, <coughs> active signals into the environment to reliably estimate the depths. However, they also suffer from the, uh, the physics of the active signals as well. Uh, for example, time of flight uh, have difficulty to figure out signals after multiple interreflections, and structure lights have the issue of having multiple devices working at the same time. Uh, alternatively, stereo matching uh, runs on two passive images, uh, such that are free from the first mentioned problem. Uh, in a typical uh, stereo setting, uh, uh, typical uh, stereo system, correspondence are found between a pair of images from um, a pair of uh, uh, parallel cameras, uh, such as the uh, corner of the pillow shown here. Uh, uh, due to the parallax, there will always be uh, like a distance between the uh, corresponding points, which is usually called disparity, and the depths can be calculated accordingly. Uh, and a common failure case for the stereo system is uh, for the textures region where no discriminative feature can be found to build uh, reliable correspondence. As a solution, we could have an IR projector to cast random dot pattern into the whole scene so that we have the texture everywhere. And such a setting is called active stereo system. Uh, but even with the texture, uh, traditional handcraft methods are still far from perfect. For example, if you ask the same person to stand 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7 meters away from the camera and run the stereo, this will be the depth stand that, uh, that we're probably going to get. As you can see, the error increases fast with regard to the depth uh, and can distort the depth a lot. And if we uh, even think about the typical case for the indoor environment where the scale can go up to uh, 3 meters, the depth might be really hard to use, right? So <coughs> designing an accurate uh, stereo matching algorithm is still in, far, uh, in high demand. And of course, these days, uh, deep learning is one of the most fascinating solutions that everybody would like to give it a try. However, there's simply no ground truth ready to use for active stereo system. And in this work, we propose Active Stereo Net, an end-to-end -end neural network architecture for active stereo system. And it takes the pair of IR. Uh, images at the input and directly output a high-resolution accurate disparity map. And at the training stage, different from traditional uh, supervised uh, training where you need to annotate data and learn from the uh, uh, ground truth supervision, Active Scenario doesn't need any uh, depth or disparity as the ground truth and can learn in a self-supervised way. Uh, basically, keep, it, uh, keep fitting it with a pair of IR images uh, and let it run from the scratch, it will learn to produce accurate disparity automatically. OK, but before introducing our method, let me first briefly give you some idea about how to apply uh, self-supervised learning for stereo matching. Suppose that you have a neural network that takes a pair of image, uh, images and produces the disparity. And remember that the disparity basically tells us the correspondence between two views. And we can uh, actually use this information to reconstruct the left view using the right view. And if the uh, estimated disparity is correct, uh, then the reconstructed left view is going to be very close to the original left view, such that the difference between these two, which is usually called photometric loss, can, be, uh, can uh, somehow uh, implicitly reflect the, uh, the quality of the estimated dis disparity. And in practice, a good disparity can be uh, found by minimizing such a photometric loss. And of course, there are previous methods using this idea for uh, uh, stereo matching. Uh, the result looks good, but uh, overly uh, smooth, especially near the boundary. Uh, these artifacts co uh, uh, can cause a lot of flying pixels when used as point cloud and can cause big trouble for some applications like uh, collision detection or uh, foreground-background separation. But why minimizing such a photometric doesn't give us uh, a perfect dis uh, disparity? And we think it, it is the problem of the loss itself. Like many other losses, disparity loss uh, get reduced over iterations during the training and stay at some small values. 
Uh, but different uh, with many other tasks where lower loss uh, is mostly preferred, uh, photometric loss may not be ideally zero. Uh, for example, uh, different exposure, occlusion, and many other factors may uh, make it impossible to fully uh, reconstruct the left view using the right view. And uh, as a result, after certain iterations, keep optimizing the remaining photometric loss very hard doesn't, further, doesn't uh, even further uh, improve the performance uh, because the loss is not simply caused by this disparity and mo uh, anymore. And it may even hurt the performance as the network may behave randomly to compensate some, uh, some losses caused by unexplainable uh, factors. So to make the training stable and effective, we need to fix the loss. Uh, in this work, we improved the photometric loss uh, in three aspects. Uh, first, uh, removing unnecessary dependency on uh, pixel brightness. And we can see that these pillows uh, shows higher loss than the other places. Uh, but the high loss is not because of the inaccurate disparity, but really because the, pixel, uh, the, because the high uh, pixel intensity. And in general, we found that brighter foreground pixels are more likely uh, to show higher loss, and darker background pixels may lack of attention due to the low loss. Uh, so to remove such a uh, uh, necessary dependency, we propose to perform a local contrast normalization, which normalizes the intensity of each pixel using the mean and standard deviation from the local window. And the loss computed on the normalized IR image is then free from pixel brightness and focused equally on foreground and the background. A second, remove unexplainable region caused by uh, occlusion. Um, we noticed that there are usually high losses near object boundary. And this is because some part of the scene is only visible in one view, but not the other view due to the, uh, due to the occlusion, such that they cannot be reconstructed like the uh, green area shown here. Uh, even the loss is high in this area, they should, also, uh, they, they should definitely be removed from the optimization as they cannot be explained by photometric loss. But how to find these pixels automatically without ground truth? We use a loop-based attack. Uh, so we first estimate two disparity maps aligned with the left view and the right view, respectively. Then a pixel in the left view can find its correspondence in the right view using one of the disparity and then go back to, uh, go back to the left view using the other. And if a pixel is visible in both of the view, it should be able to go back to its original location or at least form a, uh, form a fairly close loop. But if a pixel is only visible in one view, it's less likely to form uh, such a, a closed loop. And we calculate this uh, loop-based error for all the pixels. And this gives us a clear idea for the occluded region. From this, we can remove the pixel uh, with high loop-based error when calculating the loss. Uh, then, uh, last but not least, we also removed bad uh, local optima. We noticed that there are a lot of high-frequency components in the active uh, pattern, which is good as texture, but definitely uh, not good because it uh, may cause the loss function unstable to optimize. Uh, uh, to show this, we pick one pixel in the left view uh, and uh, calculate its uh, photometric loss under different disparity. Apparently, the ground truth disparity gave us a very uh, low loss, but there are also so many comparable good optimal at the same time. This is uh, definitely not good for optimization. And one way to remove this bad optimal is to do a window-based aggregation. And as we can see, that a uh, window of 32 by 32 can effectively uh, suppress most of the bad local optima, but also over smooth the loss too much, which will result in blurry results uh, again. To prevent this, we use adaptive support weight for uh, window-based aggregation, where in a local window, pixel with similar intensity to the target pixel in the center of the window will contribute more into the loss, kind of like a bilateral filtering using the, uh, the input image as the guide. Uh, so with the uh, adaptive support weight, the loss curve, as uh, we can see, respect the only ground truth and especially not over smoothed. OK, um, then. Uh, Applying all we have discussed, we defined a new photometric loss as the sum of the window aggregated loss for pixels passing the loop-based uh, occlusion check. Now let's look at the network. We use the architecture from the stereo net for its good performance and runtime efficiency. On top of that, our network also produced an invalidation mask to measure the confidence of the estimated disparity. Uh, we will not discuss this part due to the time limit, and please check the paper for more details. 
OK, now let's look at the uh, experiment. We use the uh, Intel RealSense D435 uh, to collect the data. It provides two IR uh, stereo cameras and a IR projector to cast random dot pattern. It also uh, provides a uh, color image, but we didn't use it. The sensor runs a handcraft sem uh, semi-global matching to uh, produce the depths, which is shown here as a point cloud uh, colored by the surface normal. And on the same data, our active stereo net produced significantly more accurate disparity uh, with fine grain uh, details. Here are some more uh, qualitative results. We compare to traditional handcraft method and the a active stereo net trained uh, supervising using the sensor output as the ground truth. Across all uh, comparison, the self-supervised model produced uh, more complete disparity with best detail and sharpest boundary, which can be easily seen in this zoomed in view. And there are some more uh, examples. Uh, again, the self-supervised uh, active stereo net uh, produced sharp boundary and handled the instructors well. A quantitative, uh, a quantitative evaluation can be hard as there's no uh, depth ground truth. We do so by collecting data from scene consisting of planar geometry, where 3D plans can be fitted as ground truth. Uh, here we show the average depth error for pixels in different distance. Uh, this is her for the sensor output, for the state-of-art handcraft methods, for self-supervised model trained with traditional photometric laws, and for our active stereo net. As we can see, the average depth error of uh, our model is so smaller than one centimeter for distance up to three meters. Statistically, we cut down the disparity error to one-tenth of traditional method from 0.2 pixel to uh, 0.03 pixels. Now let's look deeper into how each modification of the phot photometric loss helps the results. First, the local contrast normalization. We show results of the model trained uh, with traditional photometric loss, photo uh, a perceptual loss, and our proposed loss. Uh, quantitatively, uh, training with our loss produced the cleanest and sharpest boundary. And, uh, 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 quantitatively, we show the traditional photometric loss with regard to pixel intensity for all uh, three models. And the model trained using our loss produced the lowest uh, uh, loss for uh, darker pixels, which is really important to have a good depth measurement for, uh, 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 for uh, background in distance. And then about the loop-based occlusion check, we compare our result to traditional uh, self-supervised model and a version of our active stereo net with no occlusion handling. Apparently, our full model produced the sharpest boundary and almost no flying pixels. And lastly, we show comparison between model trained without and with adaptive support weight based on window aggregation. With the window aggregation, the estimated disparity maintains thin structure well and align tighter to the input image. And in the end, we'd like to have a quick discussion about the importance of having active and passive components in the stereo sy uh, matching system. Uh, we run our model under three seti settings, uh, only passive by turning off the IR projector, only active by turning off the uh, lamp in the room, and the combination of the two by default. And from the only passive case, uh, our model fails for the white wall, but still work whenever there is sufficient texture. Uh, and this shows that our model learns to find correspondence, not only just the limited for active pattern, but uh, you know, also for those uh, texture in the passive component, which shows that they may potentially work for the outdoor environment as well. Uh, from the only uh, active case in the middle, the depth is well estimated, but missing uh, some, level, uh, some details that are hard to be captured from the active pattern, such as the, the, the right edge of the co uh, coffee table. And in contrast, these details can be recovered uh, from the uh, passive component. And therefore, a combination of two works the best in practice. And in the end, as a take-home message, we investigate active uh, uh, stereo with deep learning. Uh, we propose a self-supervised learning for active sy uh, stereo system using improved photometric loss and reduce the disparity error from 0.2 pixels to 0.03 pixels. And thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, if there are any questions, please go to the microphone. Uh, so let me ask a question. So you use this adaptive support window, right? 
mm -hmm. uh, as a data term, right? Um, now, in pre-deep learning era, people that use CRFs for stereo matching used a contrast-sensitive uh, smoothness loss, which you could potentially also use. Did you also play with such a contrast-sensitive smoothness loss instead of that support window, which would also basically then uh, preserve the edges, uh, which is, I think, the intention behind that uh, yeah. adaptive support yeah. window? Yeah, I think the, the smoothness, uh, smoothness term is actually uh, has been widely used for a lot of previous uh, work for self-supervised learning. And we found that in practice, a, uh, most of the time, it caused the estimate disparity to be like over smoothed, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, in our system, we completely removed that term. And so that right now, the system only have the term that I just mentioned. So we think that it's better to handle the, I mean, vaguely handle the smoothness uh, constraint from other terms instead of just the directly define it in the, uh, in, the, in the loss function. No more questions, then uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again.